Hey guys, even here, and in this video, we have a couple of very interesting topics to talk about, and I would like to start with the Big Man Pro Show, which was won by this guy right here, Brett Wilkin. Brett looked great, I think he was a little bit fuller and bigger, rounder than he was at Romania Pro, where he placed second, but I also think that the, the, the quality of the lineup at this show wasn't as good as the Romania Pro, at least there was nobody like Behrouz Tabani to beat Brett Wilkin, the closest guy to Brett was Andrea Presti, who looked amazing as well. Obviously, he was much bigger, he's a taller guy, he has a bigger frame, he has crazy shoulder width, it's absolutely ridiculous, uh, especially from behind, he's really wide in that back, you're gonna see it in a second, but the reason why he lost, actually there are two reasons, I think the first reason was because he doesn't have the same kind of structure like Brad Wilkin, he doesn't have the perfect structure, and the second thing is, he doesn't have the quality that Brad has, and Brad does have that sort of plastic look that many of Matt Jan Jensen clients tend to have that for whatever reason. Obviously, this photo is not exactly the perfect representation of what happened at this show because Presti didn't even hit a pose here properly, but you can see it from behind. So, for example, and I have a couple of other poses as well. So, here you can see the conditioning, it was pretty close, right? And Presti has amazing, crazy shoulder width, and from behind, the way his structure is, the way his spinal erectors are looking and the way his lats are inserted, he looks like he has an incredibly small waist and his lats are popping like crazy, it just looks ridiculous, but he is not as aesthetic, as symmetrical, as balanced, as perfect as Brad Wilkin, and doesn't have that clean plastic look like Brad has, so I think that's why Brad won, also again, the structure difference. Back to this photo that I showed you earlier, here you can see exactly who was in the top mix, uh, as you can see from the left uh, you have Andrea Muzi, you have Tio, whatever his last name is, I can't pronounce it, and then you have Andrea Presti, Brad Wilkin, Mohamed Shaban, and Milan Sadek. However, this was not your top six, this was your top four. So you have, of course, Brad winning, Andrea Presti was second, in third you actually had Tio, and then you had Mohamed Shaban in fourth. Surprisingly, in fifth, finally, Roman Fritz made it, he made it to the top five, for some reason they overlooked this guy way too many times, at Romania Pro I thought he was gonna be third, however he ended up in eighth, I made a video about it, I said that he might have been robbed, however this time around I did not expect him to be in that top five based on the callouts, but as you can see he made it and I'm happy for him. He didn't really bring his signature conditioning, but he was bigger and fuller, and obviously that's what the judges are looking for, he looks better that way, and he is realizing that based on his couple of previous performances. Sibusiso Cotello also competed at this show, that's right, this show was actually a pretty good show, like the lineup was pretty deep, a lot of, you know, second to third tier bodybuilders, a lot of big name guys in this show, uh, I don't know where he landed though, but I think he brought good conditioning. I don't know if he ever had this kind of uh, glute separation and uh, this kind of dryness in the back, but I don't think he looked as big, as round, as full as he was at that uh, Arnold Classic Brazil guest posing where he was supposed to compete but didn't uh, make it on time for his category, so we didn't see him on stage unfortunately that, that time when he looked probably the best, so he competed again right here at this show, better conditioning for sure, but... Again, he didn't he didn't make it in the top five, and I don't know where he landed. I don't think he did that well at this show, but his conditioning is improved. If he can bring the fullness now with his conditioning, he can probably do better in the next show. He does. All right, next I wanted to talk about uh, Gudvito, who is out of Mr. Olympia 2022. So as you guys probably already heard, he won his uh, pro qualifier, so he's officially an IBB pro in open bodybuilding, and he looked absolutely ridiculous at this show, he looked really, really good, complete head to toe, from the front, from the side, and from the back mainly, take a look at his back, and take a look at the glutes, and like the hamstrings and the legs from behind, the calves even, and like lower back, upper back, everything from behind just looked so ridiculous, so much thickness, so much density, for such a young guy as well, I believe he's like 25 right now, so that's not something you see every day, he looked absolutely amazing in this show, uh, however he posted this post in the caption in uh, Portuguese, 
for some reason. As far as I know, he's a Russian, but I think he's sponsored by a Brazilian supplement company and all of his captions are in Brazilian. He's representing Brazil, basically, which is weird. I might be missing something. Maybe like his mother is from Brazil or something like that. If you guys have any information about that, tell me down below in the comment section. Whatever reason, he wrote this caption in Brazilian. I translated it on Google Translate and this is what it says. I became a pro athlete, my journey is just beginning, I managed to make a new quality on my fo of my form, I was as determined as possible to win and I did everything right. Next year I will win the qualification for the Mr. Olympia, so next year, not this year, unfortunately we will not see this guy compared to the other newcomers like Michal Krizio, like Andrew Jack, or like the other top guys like Nick Walker, Hunter Lobrada or whoever. Next year though, next year, he's gonna try to win a Mr. Olympia qualification, which I'm pretty sure he can do it. I think he's that good, I think he's actually amazing. I think he would do really well at the Mr. Olympia. I think he would even have a chance of cracking the top 10 if he really nails the conditioning. I think he's that good, that's just what I think. If you guys disagree with me, you can tell me down below. Uh, he won a pro card, that's good news, but no Mr. Olympia this year. Actually, I think this year we couldn't see him anyways, because I think all the uh, qualification shows for Mr. Olympia 2022 are over. Uh, the show that Brad just won, the big man show, is actually for next year's Mr. Olympia. So, even if he wanted to, it's too late to qualify for the Mr. Olympia 2022, but he will not be competing this year. He will be competing next year, maybe later in the year. I don't know. Maybe he's going to try to qualify for the Mr. Olympia 2024, however, what we know right now is he's not going to be competing in 2022, we will not see him in any pro shows this year, we will not see him compared to the other top pros from the IBB Pro League, but next year, he promised, next year, I can't wait to see that. Alright, the next thing I wanted to talk about is this new photo of Chris Bumstead that is circling around, that has people discussing whether his bicep is injured or not, and before this photo was uploaded, People were saying that Chris Bumstead is already, has already won the Mr. Olympia and it's only gonna be a battle for second. But after he posted a couple of physique updates, people are now not so sure about this. People are saying that he's gonna be, that he's gonna sleep and I think he might. Because as you can see this photo, his right arm definitely doesn't look as good as his left arm. Yeah, there could be lighting, it could be like the posing. But I mean, he did post this photo, so if there is an injury that he's hiding in his arm, and I would say not only his biceps are looking smaller, but also his, his triceps too, right? I mean, they remind me of Dorian Yates' arms in the front double bicep in 1997, when he tore both his bicep and his tricep on his left arm. As you can see, it looks much shorter. I mean, both bicep and tricep look much shorter, much smaller. Uh, he was also hiding this. If I remember correctly, I think he tore his bicep in like 1994 or so, um, however later, in 1997, he tore his tricep too, but this time around, he tore this tricep a couple of weeks before the Mr. Olympia, so he, he hid it, he didn't speak about it, and he wasn't able to train for three weeks before this Mr. Olympia, he was... Uh, able to do cardio, he was, I think he was training his legs, and he was doing everything else, as far as protocols, as far as dieting, and he looked decent, I mean, he, he managed to hide the, the, the swelling somehow, but it was obvious, it hurt him a lot, he won this show, but like everybody pretty much thinks that he didn't deserve to win it, so I don't know, maybe the same thing is gonna happen with Chris, if he actually uh, has an injury that he's hiding in his bicep or tricep, maybe he just didn't pose that well, maybe it's the lighting, maybe it's something entirely else, I don't know, I'm not sure if he actually got an injury, but something is off, something doesn't look good on this photo, something is not right. And also he has an injury in his legs, I believe, or at least that's a speculation that I hear about, I'm not sure if that's true, but there are things that might make Chris Bumstead sleep this year and actually not win the Mr. Olympia. What do you guys think? Is that even a possibility? And do you see the asymmetry in this photo? Can you see that the right arm is smaller, tricep and bicep both, than the left arm? If you guys can see it, tell me what do you think, what happened? Is it just the posing, the, the angle or something like that? Or do you think he actually injured himself, but he doesn't want to talk about it because he doesn't want a disadvantage on the show? We'll see in a couple of weeks. But there is another thing I wanted to talk about in this video, which is Nick Walker. 
Yeah, this is his update, his most recent photo of his legs, which is not something I want to talk about in this video. What I want to talk about in this video is him and his relationship with his coach or his coaches, uh, mainly his former coach that basically was helping him throughout this entire offseason, Dom Super Sliced. So basically, this is what I wanted to show you guys. Uh, there was a Q&A on Nick Walker's Instagram page and he posted this story. The question was, what are you most grateful for this year? And he tags a bunch of people. Matt Jensen is one of them, his parents and so on. Some other guys that are helping him with his bodybuilding uh, career. But he forgets to mention his former coach, Dom Super Sliced, who worked with Nick for like 10 months before Matt Jensen took over, who helped him, as Dom says, uh, bring his waist size down an inch and a half, who helped him grow as much as he did, and also was very mindful of Nick's health. So I think he helped him improve his health, his gut health mainly, and his physique for sure. But he forgets to mention him in this Q&A, in everything, basically, he never mentions him. He just stopped working with him, he went back to Matt Jensen, and that was it. He never mentioned Dom Super Sliced ever. And what is very interesting, and I would say weird, is the way Nick ended things with Dom Super Sliced. If you guys haven't seen the RX Muscle with Dom Super Sliced, I will show you this little part of it where he explains how things ended between him and Nick. But if you want to watch the whole thing, I suggest that to you. It's on RX Muscle. Uh, there is a long interview. Let me show you this part. This was very interesting. I had reached out to him to ask him, look, have you have you spoken to Matt? Um, you know, and I didn't care at all if he wanted to go work with him. Like, I was pretty much telling him mentally, if you're not in a good place, that might be the smartest thing to do. But, you know, at that time, he told me, um, no, that, you know, some people love to speculate. And then I didn't hear from him. And then I pretty much found out the same way everyone else did. <laughs> Online. Yeah. Uh, Instagram post. Yeah. And have you guys, have you guys spoken since then? Not really. And that's the only thing. Like, look. I have nothing bad. You guys were friends, weren't you? I mean, you guys were Absolutely. talking all the time. Absolutely. I mean, I would consider him like someone like in my family. I would have done anything for him. I mean, right. when uh, when we were prepping together, like I had to put a lot of stuff on hold. Like I was opening a wellness clinic. Wow, right? I mean, I don't know if this is true, but if it is, it really makes Nick seem kind of immature, childish even, that he didn't even end things with Matt, with Dom properly when he started working with Matt. So the way Dom found out that they stopped working was on Instagram like everybody else. Imagine that. I don't know if that's the case. I don't know if there is anything else between these two guys. We never really heard Nick's part of the story, so I don't know, but I don't get the impression that Dom is lying. I mean, do you? <laughs> I don't know, man. I don't know what's the case between these two guys. If we hear anything else, anything more like Nick's perspective, for example, I will share it with you guys. But I think this is pretty accurate. It is what it is. And Nick is totally ungrateful. He doesn't show any appreciation for what uh, Dom helped him with uh, in the offseason. And obviously, he did make a lot of progress. Nick grew, he gained like 15-20 pounds of sheer muscle and with that muscle more waist size did not come, his waist actually went down, he went down one and a half inches in waistline, so that's big progress, that probably is gonna mean a couple of spots uh, on Mr. Olympia. But Nick decided to not give any credit to Dom Super Sliced for whatever reason. Whatever you guys think about this situation, tell me down below in the comment section. If you enjoyed this video, guys, please give it a thumbs up. And for more videos like this, subscribe to my channel, guys. Thank you so much for watching. All the best and bye-bye.